I am here with the CEO of the Palmer Group, Shelley Palmer himself. Thank you for sitting down with me today. Such a pleasure. So how is your week going so far? It's fantastic. Yeah. Love being here, love being in Detroit. I'm so happy to be anywhere actually without a mask on, I can't even tell you. Isn't it nice? And all these people gathering in person. Yeah, it's fantastic. It's, it's exhilarating. Uh, so you work in big tech, big media, and yet you're here at an automotive engineering conference. So tell me, what is the connection between the metaverse and uh, mobility? There's no such thing as the metaverse. Uh, some people think of it as cartoon characters in a cartoon world. It's very <laughs> ill-defined. Mark Zuckerberg has the Zuckerverse, whatever he's thinking about. Most people think about it as virtual reality or augmented reality, mixed reality, extended reality. You're going to wear a headset or you're going to wear a pair of eyeglasses and somehow the world's going to come to you. That may be yeah. what the metaverse looks like in the future. But if you think about the metaverse in a greater context, as yet undefined, it's going to be built on Web3 tools. And this is going to give us a different approach to data collection and data sovereignty. So from an automotive engineering perspective, access and egress to the car, does the car know who you are? Does it know where it is? All of this is data driven. And as we're changing the relationship with consumers and data and the relationship between centralized organizations that can control data like big tech, like a Facebook, like Google, like Netflix, that they only keep their data and share only what you need, Okay, that's one way to look at it, but with consumers pressing so hard into Web3 and into decentralized data structures, I think it's important, at least now, for automotive engineering to know what's coming and to explore. And so we're here just looking over the horizon just a little bit. All of this is hypothetical. Anyone who says they know the future is lying, but we can see there's a bunch of things out there that look, yeah, that's interesting. So that's, what, that's why I'm here. And that's why I think the engineering you know, firms that we work with are paying attention. Well, you're the closest one I've spoken to yet, I think, that has that sort of view on cars in the future. I mean, what are people going to expect from their cars, would you say, from a social perspective? I think the way to think about it is how do you get from here to there? Not what do you expect from your car, what do you expect from mobility in general? I, uh, I think 24 months ago, everybody was capable of joining a Zoom meeting, but they didn't. It was go down the hall to the WebEx room and get, get, book the conference and then you needed the AV person to come in and like set it up because something wasn't working and no one could figure it out. Now you decide you want to have people from all over the globe at two o'clock on Thursday Eastern and you press a button and everybody's there. Magically, their behaviors have changed over 24 months. Now we know it's because of the pandemic and we, we understand why, but this tremendous transition has changed our relationship with what it means to get from here to there. Mobility in America, for sure, has always meant my car, my freedom. Well, what does it mean now? And so that exploration is, I think, the most important part. And when you think about living in a data-driven world where the cars need to interpret data, they're going to need some ability to do local computation. There's going to have to be some cloud connection. The cities are going to need to talk to the cars. The people are going to need to talk to the cities. We all need to talk to each other. There's a lot of infrastructure that just needs to be built. And while it's very fun to start thinking about this great future, network topology doesn't exist. Computational power doesn't exist. It will, but it doesn't. So how do you pick that path? And what should be the first thing you work on? Totally, the chicken or the egg kind and, of situation. And that's really what I think. When someone says to me, what do I think about cars in the future? It's like, ah. Uh, what I think about is people in the future needing to get from here to there, and what does that mean to them? And what's it likely to mean? And then how will we meet those needs as an industry? It's such an interesting time, and I'm glad you stopped by to break it all down My for pleasure. us and have a fantastic time in person with everybody here. You bet. Shelley Palmer, thank you so much.